Today I'm going to model for you the parts of an Orton Gillingham lesson. You can take out your card at the beginning of your binder and follow along. So I'm going to go step by step and I'm going to pretend that I've already taught letter C O A D. So I'm on my final magic C letter in this series. So here are the steps to the Orton Gillingham method. The first three steps are the three part drill and those are just reviewing concepts previously taught. The first one is the phon phonogram review card. So I'm going to be using my card decks and I'm going to show the letter and the kids are going to say the sound that this letter makes. So this would say D. And it's really important that the kids don't say duh with the, the short U sound under. So if they do, you're going to put it, you're going to say, remember this is D short and you're going to put it at the back. If they get it correct, D then you are going to put the cards in three piles, in a beginning, a middle, and an end position pile. And the backs of your cards will tell you where this letter can go. So D can go in the beginning or the end of a word. K. Ah. 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 What do you notice about ah and ah? They're on yellow cards because they are royal vowels and you're constantly reiterating the royal vowel idea because you really want kids to tune into the vowels. Okay, so that didn't take us very long because we don't have very many, but when you get more and more cards that you've done, then you want between 25 and 30 cards in your deck because you never want to have 75 and have it take a really long time. The second step in the review drill is the kinesthetic step. So this one, I t showed you the letter, you told me the sound. The second step, I'm going to give you the sound and you're going to give me the letter that makes that sound. And I'm only doing the previously taught materials because this is review. So I would say the sound is k. And the students would only know one sound at that point that says k. So they would say c says and I know you can't see in my sand, but after you make the letter, then you draw the base line. So whether it is right under the C or the belly of the letter, and then the tail would go underneath. You wanna really reinforce letter formation every chance you get. So the kid would leave their sand with the letter in it. You could check each child around your table. And then here is the system that I have to make this next part really easy. Dust dust, that gets the dust off their fingers, shake, shake, clears their board, hands on your side, and then that's, they're ready for the next sound. The next sound is D. D says D. They show me dust, dust, shake, shake, hands on your side. The next sound is ah. Notice that I'm constantly going back to my total physical response. Ah, O says ah, dust, dust, shake, shake, hands on your side. The next letter is ah, A says ah. Remember, A is a magic C letter, so I make my magic C up, connect, and down. A says ah, dust, dust, shake, shake, hands on your side. You're gonna review from your um, phonogram chart that shows you which letters we've already taught. You're gonna go through 15 to 20. You do not want it to, to the whole review to take more than 10 minutes. So that's our second part of our three-part drill. The third and final part of your review or your three-part drill is the blending board. And you have these cards in your piles from the phonogram review. So now you're going to pull them up onto your board and the kids are going to say the sound of each letter and then blend it together. If it is a real word, they're gonna give you a thumbs up. It's a real word. If it's a nonsense word, thumbs down. And that really helps them tune in to understanding and identifying and think about thinking about, do I know this word? Do I know its meaning? So that when they start reading text, 
They're not just reading across words and not thinking about I know that or I don't. So this would look like this. K -a -d cod. Cod is a real word. It's a kind of fish. How about this word? K -a -d cad. Not a real word. How about this word? D -ack -dack. Not a real word. How about this one? D -a Doc. Yes, sometimes we have doc for short for doctor. It's an abbreviation. So you would go through just like that with all your cards. Obviously, we don't have a lot to review. And that is the three-part drill. The three-part drill is just pre reviewing previously taught concepts. So now I'm at step four and step four, or I'm sorry, step three. There's three parts, but there's only two steps on your page three-part drill. The next step is explicit instruction of a new concept. So this is where you're going to use the back, which is the discovery learning method. The discovery learning method gives them lots of chance to explore and to listen and to hear before you label what the new concept is. Okay, so our new concept. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to listen very carefully while I say five new words. You're gonna listen for those five words to hear if you can hear my new sound. The first word is go, gate, get, gum, glue. Ooh, step number two, student listens, repeats, and guesses the sound. So I would say those same words again slowly and you have the student repeat. Go, get, goat, gate, and glue. Did you hear the new sound? The new sound is g, g. Say it with me, g. Then I would give each student a mirror to hold up and they can actually see what that sound looks like in their mouth. So you can talk about tongue and teeth placement. You can talk about the position of your mouth. Lots of kids kind of need that to help them articulate difficult sounds. The next step four is you're going to touch your throat or your vocal cords and we're listening when we say this, we're seeing if it vibrates our vocal cords. If it does, we're gonna say it's a voiced sound. If it doesn't, we're gonna say it's unvoiced. Say the word or the sound, g, g, g. Does it vibrate your vocal cords? Yep, so this is a voiced sound. The next step five, I'm just going to explicitly tell them whether it's a consonant or a vowel. So I would say, this new sound, g, is not royal. It's not going to be one of our royal vowels. It is a consonant sound. Then, this is their favorite part, I would hand the students or the class and let some kids come up and they are going to pull out and actually explore items that would have this sound. So, guitar, glue, gorilla, gum. And it's that discovery idea that they're getting to discover something. Finally, after all of that, I would finally say today's new letter that makes the G sound is the letter G. This is the uppercase G and this is the lowercase G. And then I would have the student re um, look at this and I would say, this is our keyword, G says g like gate. Say it with me. G says g like gate. And they would repeat those all three together. G says g like gate. Then I would show them how to make the letter G and I would practice just upper or lower case one at a time. And I would say the lower case G is special. Watch. When I make it, tell me if you notice what I'm doing. You're right, it's a magic C letter. So I would have the kids take two fingers out. You're going to write the magic C turns into a G three times in the air. Ready? G says G. Ooh, I like how you put it down into the ground. G says G. Magic C up, down into the ground, loop around. The reason that you want to do it skywriting first is it's risk-free. Kids don't have any um, 
emotional investment in it because if they mess up, nobody really knows. So you're giving them kind of a free chance to practice. Three times, this magic rule of three is to do everything three times. So then you're going to give them a paper that would have the letter G on it. If you have sandpaper tactile cards that they can use, even better. I've made them out of glitter foam that you can get at the hobby store for very cheap. So this would be another way to get multi-sensory feedback. And you're going to have them trace with their finger three times, either on a multi-sensory board or on a page. G says G, G says G, G says G. This is when they finally pick up a pencil. So in my primary everything reading notebook, it's more of a folder, but the kids will have different, um, just a few pages at a time, so it's not overwhelming. And I'm going to have them with a page that looks like this. It has the sky grass ground lines on it, and I would have the letter G ready for them. So they're gonna trace it again. G says G, G says G, G says G, and then they finally pick up their pencil. I have a dot to, as a starting point, and I walk around and celebrate with them, sometimes even holding their hands to help them. Letter formation matters. Um, bad habits are hard to break, so you're gonna really wanna make sure that they do that. After they finally repeat, you're gonna take out, once again, your card. You're gonna say, G says G like gate, and then together, you get to add your letter card to now your deck. So you're constantly building together, like we're adding one more thing. We didn't know it before, and now we know it. So that is the first, um, that is the first three steps. That's ex it, um, explicit instruction of a new concept. You would only do that once a week and then practice that new concept all week long. So I would then practice G all week long. I would add it to my deck. Tomorrow's review concepts would be with that in the deck. The next one is your um, step number four is you're going to practice at the phoneme or word level. So you can do this multiple different ways. We use 95% group and you can have the kids pushing chips. That's a great way to practice that way. And you could do letter tiles. There's lots of different multi-sensory practice methods out there where you're tuning into the sounds of each letter. You could tap sounds out as well. And then finally, you get to the encoding dictation part. And for kindergarten and first graders, their paper is very, very simple. You're going to have a limited amount of feedback that they have to give, just a couple, but you're gonna get that encoding piece. So everything we've done so far has been decoding and reading other than the sand. We want them to pick up the pencil and actually do some encoding. So it would be very simple and it would be words that we letter, words that contain the letters we've already learned. So I would say, let's together see if we can write the word dog. Say dog, say dog. Let's tap out the sounds of dog. D, A, G, dog. They're tapping with their non-dominant hand, so their pencil is in their, in their hand and they can be writing. What was our first sound? D. They can also be using hand tapping mats left to right. The first sound was D. What letter makes D? Oh, a D says D, like dog. And I write D. And then I say D, A, A. What letter says A? O says A, like octopus. D, A, G, G. Ooh, there's that new letter I just learned. What was the letter that says G? G says G like gate. And I'm giving them sound lines. You can do sound boxes, but each letter is on a different line. This says D off G, but I wouldn't really read it like that. How would I read it? Dog. So I'm gonna write it all connected like I would read it. Dog, D-O-G, D off G, dog. And I might do two words, that's it. Very, very simple. At this level, you can't even write a sentence with those first five. So I would not have them do sentence dictation at this point, but as they get going, as we add more and we can write sentences, 
then every word gets one line and you can write complete sentences. Mom sat or mom and Matt. I don't know. You'd write a sentence with only the letters that you've learned. That example. And finally, number six is text reading. And even at this most basic, basic um, instructional level, you want them to see that what they're doing with all of these things is transferring to real reading into real text. So you're pointing it out in books that you're reading, but you're giving them a chance to actually do real reading. So for this one, we're not really to the point where we can read sentences with just these letters, but I could have them practice reading the words. So I would say dog, dad, cog, doc, god, cod, ad. These are words that I can read with just the first five letters of the sequence. As you get going, then you're going to want decodable text. So whatever pattern is of that week, you have a decodable text that they will see that pattern and be able to identify that pattern and do real reading within that pattern. That concludes the steps of an Orton-Gillingham lesson. So three-part drill to review previously taught material, explicit instruction of a new concept once a week. Then for the rest of the week, we would be practicing at the phoneme and word level, encoding and having dictation, and finally, real text reading.